completely incomplete, fearful. True, it makes them easier to manage, but in a human sense, it ruins us. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, under the cover of the public distress caused by mass immigration, uh, we became Prussianized in every corner of America, particularly the coasts. By 1940, Walter Lippmann had witnessed it gnawing deeply into the foundations of American prosperity, which lay in our ingenuity, our self-reliance, and our imagination. Prussian schooling was directly, directly the creation of a philosopher at the University of Berlin who had inherited Immanuel Kant's chair. Uh, his name was Fichte, Johann Fichte, and Fichte demanded publicly of the Prussian king that the imagination of ordinary people be eradicated because it, it added an unpredictable element to the Prussian economy, which largely was based on renting soldiers and invading other countries and stealing their stuff. If the individual soldiers could imagine a different way, could think for themselves, obviously they weren't as efficient from the managerial point of view. And oddly enough, Fichte was not the first major philosopher to call for the destruction of the imagination of the ordinary population. About a hundred years before Fichte, a philosopher who in college classes is considered to be a great liberal, the man was Spinoza. He, he knew himself as Benedict Spinoza, but history records him as Baruch Spinoza for reasons that would take another lecture to go into. Anyway, Spinoza, in a book called The Tractate of Religion and Politics, usually you'll see it render, your librarian can order it for you as Tractatus Religico Politicus. Spinoza invented, down to the most minute details, the form of systematic schooling that we have in the United States today, and also in most parts of the world, you know, with minor deviations. Spinoza said the purpose of this was to destroy the imagination and to fill the ordinary mind with such nonsense, with so many contradictions, that they would be unable to oppose, I'll call it management. Spinoza's motivation for saying this is he believed, he believed that about 90% of the human race was permanently eradicatably irrational, dangerously so, murderously so, and they had to be confused so they would turn their murderous impulses inward rather than uh, messing up the lives of the rational few. Uh, and interestingly enough, prior to Spinoza, we have another almost identical percent of the population are hopeless. They're damned before they're born, and no amount of good behavior will reclaim them. And therefore, first you've got to keep this news from them, because it might make them restless, and second, you've got to <laughs> embed them in a system of schooling in which they're taught to chase illusory prizes to wear themselves out competing against one another. 
and so on. And the original father of this idea, and I know that most of you are aware of this, was a classical Greek aristocrat we remember as Plato and in his two utopias, uh, the laws is the last of the two and the Republic is the one most people read. He lays down a system of confused enterprise to render most people harmless. Uh, this idea has traveled directly down to us. I have been unable in years of trying to find a major thinker who rejected this idea, who didn't boost it, and the one that caused the most damage.